The purpose and objective for this painting is to create a monochromatic study, but not just using a paints grey or a neutral tint, but a couple of dark pigments that I've got in my box that I rarely use, which is Sodalite Genuine, a very granulating bluish grey, and Moon Glow, which is one of those Daniel Smith pigments that has three pigments in it. it turns into a kind of a violet purpley color because it's made out of a red, a blue and a gray. And as you paint with it, the three colors slightly separate on the page and has a really nice effect. But it's a pigment that's really hard to use in a regular painting because it's difficult to mix with it because it already has three colors in it. So it's a little bit unpredictable what it does when you add, say, a yellow or another red or something to it. But on its own, it's a wonderful color. There's a lot of depth as a background uh, or a sky wash or something like it. So my sketch is done and now I'm going to wet the sky. And there is a little bit of yellow in my paint water that wasn't intentional, so you can ignore that. Should have been clear water. Now it's a bit hard to tell which pigment is which as I paint with it here, but if you do take inspiration from this video and want to create something similar, uh, don't worry so much about whether I'm using the Moon Glow or the Sodalite pigment. You can do this with Paints Grey as well as any other pigment that can give you the full range of values from a very light to a very dark. I often do value studies with ultramarine blue mixed in with a bit of burnt sienna or burnt umber. Sometimes I use Van Dyke brown which is similar to sepia color. So any of those type of pigments will work. You can also use neutral tint and mix in a tiny bit of ultramarine that will get you very close to a paint gray. So Choose whatever you like. I picked those two pigments, as I said, because I rarely use them in any other uh, watercolors because they're hard to mix. And I really wanted to play around with the granulation of both of those pigments. The Moon Glow is the one that separates, and you can sort of subtly see how the uh, purple and the reddish tint is coming through with that Moon Glow there in the right half of my sky. And on the left half, I have used more of the soda light because that is so granulating. And later on, I'll show you a close up once I'm finished and you can see the wonderful textures that it creates. That also doesn't always work for everything, obviously. Um, but if you do want to create something with a lot of texture, say rocks, this would work wonderfully with rocks, I imagine. Here you can really see now the moon glow property coming through on that left midground. And now I'm wetting the water because I want to create some reflections of the sky wet in wet. Because I'm working with two slightly different pigments, I am thinking a little bit in color and adding the soda light more as a shadow color and the moon glow as sort of the main color. But once more, this would work perfectly well with just one pigment. But a paints gray is fantastic as well because paints gray is made out of three pigments. The traditional mix. So if you use paints grey you will also get that colour separation. A quick blast with the hairdryer just to speed up the process. I've switched to a smaller brush. This is one of my newer Chinese calligraphy brushes. It's almost like a rigger. It's got fairly long bristles and coming to a point. And when I wave my brush up and down like that, this is when I'm thinking, <laughs> when I'm kind of 
mentally preparing myself for what I'm going to do next. So I'm glazing now with a little bit stronger pigment than before. Because now I'm going to add the darker mid values almost to my darkest values now. So now I'm going in with quite a dark pigment, establishing that background line of shrubs and bushes and there's some trees sticking out. And you can use any kind of brush obviously that you are comfortable with. A round brush would be just as fine as what I've got here. But I do like the feel of these brushes. I'm still getting used to it a little bit. They were sent to me by um, a company called Golden Maple. And I did a little review on them in another video. And I quite like these fine calligraphy brushes here with the long bristles. Because you can see that I've created quite a bit of texture with them but also fine lines. Now I switch to a synthetic flat brush because I want to pull in some of the reflections into the water now and build up the illusion of a still body of water. This is a swamp and it fills up with water after heavy rain. It's often very dry in summer but we've had a lot of rain so it's lovely to go up there and see all those wonderful reflections and now I'm just adding a tiny bit of my quinacridone rose in there because in the foreground there is a bit of red um, so I've deviated a bit from my plan to make it a monochromatic uh, painting but in saying that you can even hardly see that it's red on the camera it looks pretty dark, but in the actual painting there is just that hint of rose coming through in that little foreground bush there. But then I'm going back to my grey tone. I have very thick paint now, hardly any water in there. You can see it's got a lovely dry brush effect. This is where these kind of brushes really come to good use. Fantastic for grass textures. And just flick the brush lightly over the paper, just let it dance and make those marks. And while I've got just very dry paint on my brush, I'm just going to add some detail there on that bank, just to create the illusion of there is long grass all around. Now I'm going to turn my attention to that second cluster of grass that is coming out of the water. And while I always look at my reference photo, I'm always conscious to make sure that I paint what the painting needs, not to depict reality. We're almost finished. I'm now going to add in those trees in the background and they will attract a lot of attention in this composition. There isn't a lot of verticals. It's a very horizontal painting so anything that is a vertical will attract the eye. It's also exactly at the converging lines of the two banks coming together so that v-shape so that's the point there. Obviously the eye will be attracted to that point. And thirdly, it's also sitting right on that intersection between the rules of third grid lines, if we imagine those grid lines on the page there. A few final touches, a few more reflections in the water, a bit more value on that right side 
and a few details in that foreground grass cluster just wanted to hint at some reflections in the water as well and then just a couple of masterly smudges with my finger and I'm done take the tape off always our favorite moment when we finish a painting and it's turned out quite lovely as a little value study and here we can see this wonderful granulation of those pigments, perfect for cloudy and stormy skies, for rocks, or any other subject that needs a lot of texture. So maybe I've inspired you to bust out your random and rare pigments you've got stashed away somewhere and do some value and one color studies. They are really good fun and a very useful exercise. Thanks for watching.